Hi, it's um, Zenthi here. Um, I uh, just wanted to come out with some stuff that's on my head about this concept of masking and unmasking and how um, I don't actually believe in that concept. I um, noticed that it's very strongly pushed by the neurodiversity community. Neurodiversity is political ideology to do with identity politics with the intersectional stuff and you know like casting neurotypicals against neurodivergent oppressors and against oppress the oppressed etc. Um, it's um, not very evidence based in my opinion it's pseudoscience and it's a pile of crap to be honest just putting it blunt. Um, but anyway this whole concept of masking um, yes, it is possible to mask socially, um, for a bit, but some of these people are saying that they mask, which is like disguising how they really feel, for example, uh, and, you know, maybe acting more pleasant when they don't feel like it, blah, 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 um, claiming to do it for their whole life since early childhood, so no one noticed a damn thing, including themselves. I think that's bullshit, and some people are running with that narrative, because they have what they have um, either self-diagnosed or somehow convinced a clinician later in life um, that they must be autistic. They want to go for one autism, two AHG. Third most popular seems to be DID, but they call it plural is self-ID. But anyway, um, I uh, didn't comment any else in videos about this sort of topic and <laughs> sort of getting on people's nerves I think but um, some people have commented that I'm very analytical uh, yeah I have an analytical creative mind and I developed the analytical side more because I studied science at university so even though I can't really use it because of my disabilities uh, I did was interested in science okay so uh, I'm just going to give an example just uh, keep them anonymous but this particular case is very odd. I watched a video with some um, females saying um, that they are autistic whether self-diagnosed or claiming a formal diagnosis, right? Now one of them, when I was skipping through the video and reading the transcript, one of them really stu stood out because it's a very strange story. I won't give all the details, but basically there was an admission that this person practiced with friends to unmask, to hide the intellect. It was compensating. And I thought, hmm. Now, when I've seen people claim to be unmasking before, it is it comes across as really performative. They're suddenly deciding they want to try out stimming. Let's practice stimming for five minutes a day or something like that. Yes, bollocks in my opinion. But anyway, this one was pretty curious because um, she said that um, she overdid it. In other words, this is how I see it. From what she said, she admitted that she exaggerated for the assessment and guess what? She came out with a level 2. So there's different support needs, level 1 with low support needs, level 2 with the medium, moderate support needs and the level 3 with the high support needs. And most people will say, well, that the level 1 is equivalent to what Asperger's used to be. Level 3 was like the classic presentation of autism. So I don't really know where the level 2 is. It might be the ones some Asperger's that have the more higher needs, I don't know. But this person managed to convince the clinician that they're level 2. And then, the funny thing is, is that they didn't agree with that, so they went back to the clinician um, and tried to argue with it to get changed to level 1, because they, they didn't want to be a level 2. <laughs> and get this, this person, because this is the thing, this is the weird ass thing about diagnosis today with that particular diagnosis is because the identity people, the neurodiversity people 
who basically ripped it off and then they're saying they have no impairment. Diagnosis should only be given if there is clinically significant impairment plus you meet the criteria. Well, what it's done is been watered down with all these traits. So this is the, where the neurodivergence comes in. Anyway, um, what was I trying to say about this? I made a comment because I thought something's really fishy about this. So that person replied, you know, trying to justify. There was also some other claims from this person about, which sounded absolutely bizarre, saying that the clinician had a breakdown during the assessment, forgot thought they were a family member and said that they were going to be murdered or raped or something bizarre and so I mean if if they if it was true that the psycholo psychologist had somehow lost touch with reality there the whole freaking assessment would be a balls up right so and apparently they did challenge it and they got it changed to the level they wanted, which is one. They wanted one, which was kind of like the Asperger's variety. But then Asperger's, you can get some more severe varieties as well. So, I don't know. But then, because after the commenting on me, I thought, okay, let's go and have a look at their page. Look at a few videos. Um... There's a slightly different presentation in this, um, in the way that they came across, um, and um, I would agree that they are not neurotypical if they had to use that, you know, that binary thing. But turns out, let's see if I can remember, PhD own a house, live independently, work with kids, researcher, uh, what else can I remember? I don't know. But then they somehow managed to convince the clinician was practicing with friends. So obviously, um, I think it might have been the same person that had been in a bridal party several times, I'm not sure, but <clears throat> I don't know. Something's fishy, but I'm not going to name who it is, I, uh, I just, you know, when people claim a diagnosis these days, uh, some of, I've seen some people would say they exaggerate to get it, and, uh, is performative and um, I've seen quite a lot of people claim they got a, a burnout which they like to call autistic burnout. Autistic, there's no such freaking thing in my opinion as autistic burnout. It is burnout. What they describe as burnout which is um, some mild depression symptoms, mainly exhaustion. Which burnout you can get with lots of things. You can get it when you're a caregiver. You can get it when you've been doing study. You can get it with, you know, high intensive socially communication careers. And that's the thing. Some of these people worked in careers that were high social communication intensive for years and years and years. And then they burn out, just like the neurotypicals do. And then they go in that state when they're feeling exhausted and not up to things. Go and get an assessment and then they get their diagnosis. I bet you they wouldn't get it otherwise. It's a load of bollocks. And then what they do is they turn it into identity. Then they um, make profit from it as a social media influencer with a large following. Now one of these, um, well, well a few of them, but one in the particular, which is what I was originally commenting on. This guy, he does it professionally he says he's diagnosed, but he has admitted he's never been assessed. So I've actually commented on that a few times. And the people would have been there and go, oh, no, but he has been, he has, he has to diagnose, he has really diagnosed. I said, no, if you listen carefully, he's admitted it's a provisional diagnosis. That's a query diagnosis. That means that he's just gone in, 
to a professional and said to them, oh, I think I'm autistic, do you think so? And they go, oh, probably. That's all it takes. Um, and then he goes and says, that's enough for me. He doesn't go through, and you know why he won't get assessed, he's, um, he's admitted, because he's scared to take away his identity by misdiagnosing him as normal. <laughs> But he was glad that someone agreed that maybe he's autistic because he's not crazy. <laughs> the neurodiversity advocates love to carry on about ableism, yet they hate to think that they might be crazy. Well, I like to joke that I'm certifiably crazy because I'm diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Um, and there were times when I said, look, I'm not, I don't have bipolar, I'm autistic. And I was quite adamant about it. Now this is quite dangerous because I saw an elderly woman with the same set of videos saying um, she's diagnosed bipolar for a long, long time. But she's recently self-diagnosed as autistic. And the um, thing is, is that it's like a cult. And it's so... Um, they like to say that if you are diagnosed with borderline personality disorder or bipolar disorder and you're female, it must be a misdiagnosis. So you're really autistic. Now, both of those can improve significantly with medications and or therapy. And um, also uh, telling people that they can go off their meds is actually freaking dangerous. I've been off my meds. And... It didn't go very well at all. Uh, now, I actually recently, because I was very concerned about all of this stuff, uh, saved up on a low income, have been assessed by a private psychologist because I've been seen by public ones. And I want—I said to him, look, this autism thing keeps getting query, can you please assess it? Plus, um, I want your opinion reading my medical, because he wanted to read my medical records. I want your opinion on the bipolar, please, because I'm taking these meds. Which they do have shit side effects. Okay. So anyway, he said, um, yeah, it's very clear that I have bipolar disorder. Um, he said also, he agrees with the P PTSD diagnosis. He said, I'm on the autism spectrum, but I don't meet criteria for autism spectrum disorder. So I'm sub-threshold. Um, I said, what about the DSM-4, which New Zealand also uses? He said that, uh, not Asperger's, but meets a criteria for PD, PDD, NOS, Pervasive Developmental Disorder, not otherwise specified. Some people say that's folded into Autism Spectrum Disorder. Apparently that's not true. Um, there's some study somewhere, but approximately half of them aren't. Some of them won't meet criteria for the ASD in the DSM-5. So uh, anyway, I decided either way I'm not going to call myself autistic again because I also don't call myself bipolar. I mean, yeah, I have the, I have the, um, the name Bipolar Courage as my page name, but that's not like my identity. It is um, just a page name, right? I say I am diagnosed with bipolar. Um, now, this psychiatrist, it actually annoyed me a bit, but he actually said he prefers to call PDD, you know, as neurodivergence these days, and in my case also a highly sensitive person. But then, when I think about it, I've seen some neurodiversity enthusiasts um, moan that people were using the word neurodivergent and also highly sensitive person, HSP, to try and get out of saying not autistic so it's it's all a bunch of labels and but my point is is that um it's it's been very watered down i've seen a uh psychiatrist or a psychologist a psychologist that's been um specializing in asperger's for years and years and years I believe selling out to the neurodiversity movement. That's what I've noticed. Um, his name is Tony Atwood. I'm familiar with his work and I do agree with some of his points, but I don't know. He, I watched some of his videos and he says he actually watches more, he, he reads more autobiographies now than um, 
it reads research paper <laughs> and like half these autobiographies of people who are self-diagnosed or got burnt out and convinced the psychiatrist some sort of clinician that they must be autistic and it's a water down water down water down to all these vague traits that are present into like at least a third of the population that it makes diagnosis meaningless and it will affect those who need the support the most when it's just turned into some newfangled identity to make people feel validated by ripping off a medical diagnosis. Absolute bullshit. Anyway, that was my rant, thanks.